I'm Allie. I came out after 20 years of marriage, and I have three kids. I'm Melissa, and I have two kids, and I came out at 37 after an 11-year marriage. This podcast is about coming out later and the struggles and victories that come with it. When coming out feels like the end of the world, but it's really just the beginning. This is The Lesbian Chronicles. Welcome to The Lesbian Chronicles. Christmas edition. Christmas explosion over at your house. No, man. I am a little like Christmas obsessed, like not going to lie. Really? We did ours last night too. You just We put just put our up? stuff up. Oh my God. I did it like legit the day after Thanksgiving. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, like, I guess it's hard because I don't, I don't know why we haven't. We've just been busy or Reed's had soccer. Or it's been like a, we have to, everyone has to be there. So it's just, do you do it by yourself or do the kids do it? No, the kids did it. And actually yeah. this year I let Kaylin put out, like I have a, I think probably like 20 Santas. Okay. Um, and I let her like decorate, put them all out. So I've had to let my like OCD control issues go and just believe oh, yeah. what she did. But she did a pretty good job. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah. I'm okay with it. I think it looks really good. So. We have this Christmas village that I wish I never started that like from way back in the day. And Is it's it the like, one that they used to sell at Michael's? Probably. Uh, it's like this, like, I think it's something almost 52 ceramic. or, yeah, it's like with the lights inside and like, it. Mm. oh my God. So the kids every year, this is like the highlight is where the village is going to go. But now I'm so into the house that I'm like, I don't want anything like disrupting like curb appeal or any kind of like. That's hilarious. <laughs> so they're like begging me to do it like right in the living room. I totally gave in. Oh, you did? Yeah. The way I see it, like I did win the battle over like the clear lights. The kids wanted colored. I hate colored. Yeah. Um, but the way I look at it is like, okay, in right. 10 years or right. whatever, they're out of the house. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Um, so as long and as I don't they're really even, it's, them. I don't care. I just, I don't know why. Like I just, I'm in that. I'm into houses. That's my job. So it's like when I look at I mean, yes. this ugly thing sitting there, or even like we have stuff from Disney that the kids have bought through the years that's like Disney themed Christmas stuff. And I'm like, oh, uh-huh. God, God help me. <laughs> God help me. You're going to be like packing up their shit when they're moving out. Like, and now take Sending your, it to, with Disney them. No, I'll be so sad when they're gone. Oh, my oh. God. I'm already, Owen finds out about college like today, one of them. Oh, wow. And it's just like so stressful. Yeah. You'll Is this see. one going to be like closer though? Like than Tate? Um, no. Oh my God. I know. Actually, uh-huh. if he gets into this one, it'll be about the same as Tate. If he gets into the other ones he wants, it's going to be triple as far. Oh my God, dude. I don't know how you're managing this. Like I this hate is it. like, I am going to really push for my kids to go to school. Like, in the state of Georgia. I know. That's what I, I it's funny because when I was, I always thought that. And then when I was married, um, my ex-husband's parents would always, they made their kids go, they drew a circle around where they lived in New Orleans. And they, he grew up in New Orleans. They drew a circle of a 500 mile radius that they had to go outside the 500 miles. They had to go outside, outside of Outside the 500 miles. Oh, wow. I think it was 500. It might have been 400 but they wouldn't let them go to school any closer than that. Like they were like, you just have to, really? have to get out. And so they, they, my kids have heard that like their whole life. So they, mm-hmm. they have this thing of like, they have to go far. It's so ridiculous. It didn't even like enter the realm of possibility that I would go anywhere outside of the state of Georgia. Like my choices were like either going to Georgia state UGA or where I went to school, Georgia college. And like, I yeah. didn't even fucking think about like some grand like NYU situation no I didn't think about those kind of schools I did apply to University of Florida and I almost went there but um I didn't really either but I think too it's like my parents also have this thing about the flow like when you're in the flow of people and I think where the kids go to school everybody ends up going to these like far away schools I don't know they're not like SC nobody is super SEC heavy or like southern and so Mm -hmm. I think they end up hearing about where other people go and then they think they want to go. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much just chose it based on where my boyfriend is going. Well, there you go. I went to Indiana. I went where I lived. Same. Same. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Looking, it's like one of those things like, you know, if I knew what I knew 
now. Like, what would, would you? How would things. you do it differently? Yeah, I mean, if like money wasn't a thing, whatever, I probably would have tried to go somewhere like UCLA or yeah. somewhere in New York, somewhere bigger. Yeah, you know, I think that's kind of how they see it. Doing. Yeah, it's like you get this so. one chance to just go live somewhere else and see. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like I was asleep the first half of my life. So I, I don't just even didn't remember. Think. Like, yeah, I'm with you. Like, I don't really remember even like what I was doing there. Yeah. It's so weird. It but. is really weird. I wonder if this is like a common thing for like late in life people too. Like we're really able to like compartmentalize and just push things out of our brain and, and like done. follow, go with yeah, the flow. Yeah. Like yeah. this is just what's easiest. And so I'm going to do this. Right. Kind of thing. No, yeah. The path of least, least resistance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no more. Yeah, no more. <laughs> well, um, Now I've made my life extremely difficult. I know. God, I feel the same way. It's super complicated at this point. And getting more complicated all the time. Well, what are your Christmas plans? Yeah, so uh, honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but um, Tatum gets home tomorrow. I'm so excited. And then I think we're probably going to just be here. We do have a trip out of town right after Christmas, but um, I think we're going to be here, and I think we're going to just chill and be easy. Yeah. How about y'all? It's kind of same. Like, I don't yeah. have any plans to travel or anything. Um, today is the last day of school before they go on break. And yeah, we're just, I mean, I had plans to take them ice skating yeah. at Pond City Market. Yeah, you know, they I do saw like that. the rooftop yep. thing yep. and I got an igloo and everything, but I fucked up the booking. <gasps> like, I booked the igloo for like three o'clock and then I booked the ice skating for six o'clock. So I had to like reschedule it for like January. Wait, why can't so, you just do the igloo and then shop around? Because I have to work the... that day. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't be able to even get there by three. So yeah, it's me. Kind of bummed about that because that was like the one like Christmas thing that I had planned yeah. for next week with them out of school. But I mean, we'll figure something out. There's like tons of stuff to do. Go ride around, look at Christmas lights. Oh, and, yeah. Um, they're with me leading up until next weekend and then they're going to stay with their dad like christmas eve i was going to go spend the night over at his house on christmas eve but i think i'm just going to come back here like once we get everything like set up because i have the dog i totally forgot about the dog yeah, aspect, yeah. you know like, so wait yeah. then will you cruise over there in the morning yeah so i'll get up super early and go over there we have a rule too with the kids like you cannot get up and go downstairs until you've been told and it has to be like at the earliest is like six forty five seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they will stay upstairs until like I get there. Um, and that's what Tom's done the past couple of years too. Like if he's not stayed here, he just comes over first thing in the morning. So that way, like we still get to see them. You know, I, that's my favorite part of the whole thing is like seeing them walk downstairs and like be in awe. Yeah. It's amazing. Like it that's amazing. The, always been the thing between Tom and I. Like we're like neither of us are giving up this part. I know. Like we are both going to be there. I know it gets complicated though, right? Like I think. Oh, totally. um, I mean, not to get into it too much, but like it's complicated in my situation. Like it's stressful of like yeah. how how we're going to do it and how is it equitable and like with her situation, they don't do it together. We always did. And so it's like, I don't know, that it causes a lot of stress for us. Yeah. And I'm sure it's, it's like, it's like the more people that are involved too, it's like the more moving parts and, you know, like seeing as, as your ex is now living with someone, like yeah. what does she want it to do? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure what does she her has family opinions. do? It? Yeah. You know? Um, and then on top of that comes like the guilt like for me at least. Yeah, you disrupted you know? these kids' lives and now this. Yeah, now yeah. like they want to have Christmas at my house this year, but I had to say like sorry, this is just the way it is, like it's at dad's house this year. I didn't even try to like debate with him on like let's do it at my house because they wanted to. It's just is kind of like this is this is the plan, you yeah. know. Yeah. How do you um, know that's self-control? I mean, it, like every it feels year like a tactic. I, it does to be like, every single oh, the year, kid said. I go and to Chris and ask for it. it. Once I said, okay, like, oh, like it is dad's year. We're going to do Christmas at, at his house. They were like, okay. 
Like they didn't fight me on it. No, no, no. Um, the hard part though really becomes putting out Christmas presents for three kids and it's being shopped by two different moms. I and know. So, like, and we to make it equal. Kind of, like, and yeah. Yeah. We've got like, I already took a picture of all the stocking stuffers that I got and was like, I just bought all this stuff at Target. If you want to go get some of the same stuff so it matches, like do it now before it's gone. Wow. Because the stuff at Target will like sell out. Yeah. Stocking stuffers. Yeah. So. Oh, it's so complicated. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. You're working to keep the magic of Santa and the fucking elf going and all this stuff. And like. It's, it's a lot of work, man. It is. It does. It's sad, though, because it is like I worry about the – I'm so concerned about the equity of it all. Like, I don't want anyone to feel like they didn't get as much, but it's like, you're right. Like, there's two different groups. Mm-hmm. So, it's complicated. Yeah. I mean, and how do you guys go about, like, doing presents? Like, is he buying them presents? You're well, buying them presents? This year, it's weird because we've had, like, big presents that we have to split that were, like, things the kids needed that we know they're going to need. So, we, they're expensive, and so we, we're splitting them. But I don't know how we're going to do the from who. Like, and I want to make sure Maria's son has the same amount that Reed has. But yeah. Reed's getting a phone this year, which is kind of a big deal. So, I feel like that feels like three presents of, like, normal so I'm right. just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do it. I've always, I, I was really sensitive about that when I first got divorced and when I started living with her. And now I feel like it's getting to where you can't keep it equal anymore because mm-hmm. it's yeah. just too hard. They get older, they need more expensive things, mm-hmm. you know? And it gets hard too, because like the older kids, they don't want like some big grand gift. It's not like you can give them a bike and they're excited about it. They want like gift cards. and yeah you know, Lululemon leggings. I don't know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I, it's um, so lame too. Cause you'll ask them and they're like, I don't really, whatever. Yeah. Like they like, don't really have anything they want. So I just, they don't like, know what up. they want because they already have everything. Yeah. And when then you get it possible. and they're like, I really don't want this. I'm like, well then that's why you had to tell me. Right. But <laughs> anyway, you know what Tatum wants every year to what? go to Jeju. Really? Yes. Oh my god! Every time she comes Dylan, home. So p- for people who don't live in Atlanta, tell them what that is. <laughs> it's, this, it's so weird. Is all I'm going to say. But um, it's the naked spa. It's the naked spa, but it's the spa where they have like you're not naked while you're walking around in the public area, and it's like igloos that are like different kinds of igloos. So one might be a cold igloo, one might be a hot. You know, to- it's going to help you with toxins igloo. One's going to be a certain kind of stone. Like, they're all different themed. Help with sleep. Help with anxiety. Like, different things. So you you put on your orange jumpsuit. It's seriously like you're in prison. And there's, like, a restaurant. It's so bizarro world. There's a restaurant in there. And people are, like, barefoot in the restaurant. But you really? Go, barefoot? Yeah, it's so weird. So then you're, um, you get on your orange jumpsuit. You hit the igloos like you do you know around and then you go after and you like do all these different pools there's like a cold plunge pool a hot tub a light red light I mean it's like all this stuff but you just like you're there for hours and hours reading hanging out like it's just a thing yeah like a bathhouse I mean I think that's a great like a bathhouse (laughs) (laughs) My brain um, immediately goes is to like, not the good kind of bathhouse, but <laughs> it is like shockingly relaxing there. I've never done it, but Marina has, and she yeah. loves it. Yeah, everybody um, loves it. Yeah, I would like. I would really like to do it one day. It's just like you sure. can't. So even I think believe. Tatum's on the right track. That's a good gift. That's an experience. Then, then, then they do this thing where it's like a you after when you're in the bath the bath area, you can lay on this like table, and they'll like scrub you down with like harsh brushes but it's like an exfoliating thing and that's fun i mean it's all just you can't even imagine you gotta go i'd probably cry with that part you gotta go feeling that would like hurt really bad Um, (laughs) feel like in tears kind of but it's more just like the way they toss you around like they're flipping you over they touch your boobs like right on like there's no it's like strange (laughs) it's so (laughs) weird but I love it I love going there what can I say that's awesome yeah (laughs) anyway what are we talking about this seems really trivial (laughs) to talk about Jeju getting my boobs touched getting your boobs I mean everybody (laughs) likes to get the boobs touched sometimes you know well when it comes to a masseuse though like 
Do you want the male masseuse or do you want a female masseuse? I don't, I'm one of those people that don't care. You know what? Like the first time I ever had one done, I wanted a guy. Yeah. I was like in college and I was like, and I think I was embarrassed like at the idea of having a woman touch me too. So I like, yeah. I was like, give me a dude. And then I felt awkward as hell the whole time with this man touching me. And I, ever since I've been like, I want a woman. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Although we had a couple's massage, me and Marina did at Serenby, and I ended up with a dude. And how was it? Yeah. It was good. I mean, but at, at then afterward, I was like, you should have had the guy because you can handle more like pressure and stuff. Like, but do you ever feel like like I just want to like keep my head down? Like, there's something a little awkward. I don't know. Like to me, it's like I don't want to do the flip over, and then have mm -hmm. like my front. Like I love just getting. Oh, my... I'm yeah. I'm like so awkward in those. I'm situations. so awkward, even though I do it. I, it's not like I never do it. I do it. I just don't. I'm awkward. Yeah, I can't stand it. Yeah, they're like, like Are I you have ready? to battle through like my anxiety yes. and awkwardness of it because I'm like, it will feel good. It will be relaxing. Yeah, yeah. even like but when they knock battle. on the door, are you ready? And you have to be like, Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so awkward. Like, don't sound too eager. But but don't sound, you want to sound, yeah, exactly. Not too excited, but relaxed. It's like, it's like at the doctor's <laughs> office, same thing. Like I just went to the doctor today and I'm sitting in there and I'm waiting. Luckily I have not like had to like change out of my clothes or whatever, but I'm sitting there and it's like close to the lunch break. And I'm like, are they going to forget about me? Oh God. Now you're in there. Just like, like I was in there for a good 20 minutes and I'm like, Damn. Like, what if they forget about so me? So what do you do? Poke your head out? What do you out? do? What do you do? Like, so thankfully she did come in, but I was like, right. I was getting close to going out and like searching for someone. Oh my God. That is hysterical. <laughs> like, that's my worst nightmare. Um, that's really funny. I have like a mild crush on my kid's doctor. And, oh, um, yes. <laughs> so sometimes they'll leave me in there for a really long time. And because I've got this, like, crush situation, I don't want to be annoying. <laughs> so I have to just, like, suffer through the whole time and be so nice. I can never complain. It's You're really. the perfect human. I'm the just perfect in case. human. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Moving on. All right. So today we were talking. This is something I sent to you the other day because I found it on instagram and i just found this account the woman's name is jillian turecki yep, i've been out the algorithms must know i'm going through something because i'm yeah. getting so much of her stuff and it's good yeah it's all good i've, I've screenshotted so many i'll i'm dying to know whether you screenshotted the same one um well first of all her last name is spelled t-u-r-e-c-k-i yeah and if i remember i'll put that link in the show notes for this episode, but um, this one's about rejection. Okay. Do you have that one saved? Um, I'm looking right Your now. Ears ready? You go ahead. <clears throat> rejection is one of the most difficult things we will endure. Someone basically tells us, no, it's not you. I don't choose to love you or be loved by you. I do not choose to build a life with you or procreate with you. So we become obsessed, obsessed with not being chosen, obsessed with winning them over so we can prove our worthiness and uniqueness. It runs deep for everyone, and all we can do is practice. Practice trusting that not everyone we want is necessarily good for us. Practice trusting that there is more to life than this person. We have to practice grounding ourselves in reality and not in the imaginary. We have to let go, which is the hardest lesson of all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's, I could dissect this for like an hour. Yep. 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 There's I love that so one. So much in there. Yep. Um, and then she goes on to say in the caption here, it says the fear of rejection is closely linked to the fear of abandonment and both rejection and abandonment confirm the fear that we are unworthy. When we live our lives fearing rejection, we're more likely to compromise our principles, values, and boundaries in order to keep someone from leaving us. It also prevents many people from taking necessary risks and love and career keeps us stuck. It's hey, true. Fuck man. That's so true. It's so like, true the number of things that like you don't do in life because you're afraid of like the, everything the outcome. Yeah. It's like most people live their entire lives that way. Uh, Me yeah. included like, to some extent. Like there's lots of things I haven't done because I'm, I was scared. So I think, I that's mean, it kind true. of circles back to what we were talking about earlier. Like just in the college choice yeah. that I made. Yep. I didn't apply to UGA 
because I was almost certain that I would not get accepted. Wow. Okay. I also didn't want to write an essay. Oh gosh. Which is yeah. kind of funny considering my profession. Today. Yeah, that is funny. But like, I was just kind of like, I don't think I'm going to get in. So why try? Yeah. Why put myself out there? But who knows? Right. Like, you know, it's like one of, you don't know until you try. And I the think one. there is the one thing I'm learning too, is that I like, in some ways, like when it comes to like business, ignorance is bliss. It's like, you don't know enough to think that you're not going to be like, you don't know enough. Like to, you just jump in and do it. And recently, this isn't relationship wise, but just work wise, we lost our CEO of our company and we now somebody else is going to be doing it. And, but there's some parts of it now that I'm having to like pick up that I have no idea what I'm doing at all. Like I'm not a business person at all. And I was saying to this guy who's been kind of a mentor for me, like that I don't know what I'm doing. Like I have to talk about stuff that I don't really understand. And he was just literally like, Allie, nobody does. Like, you know, your product, you know, your the story of the, you know it. So you, nobody knows, like, just go in there and do it. It's refreshing. Like, and, and it made me feel so good because he was like, you know, you, you know, your product. And I feel that way about my life. It's like, I know me, I can just go in and do me. It's not like you have to go in and be perfect. It's not like you have to go in and rock somebody's world. Yeah. I think it's true. Like in social situations or anything, it's like, you just go. Yeah. I'm like, I can think of so many things that this applies to. Yeah. Like, you know, like you're saying, like being afraid of like whether or not you're going to be able to rock someone's world. How many times do we hear from people that are like, I'm afraid to have sex with a woman because I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. And it's and like, it's if you like, just go do you. Yeah. Go yeah. jump right in. Like, yeah. what's the worst that's going to happen? Right. Well, there are some bad but, things that could happen. I mean, there are some <laughs> just kidding. But even then, who cares? <laughs> like, who cares? But, yes, exactly. I really feel um, that way. I mean, I, I definitely think it's just like, it's a non-event. And if I look back, I'm sure my catalyst would say, I... I'm sure she would think I, I sucked probably, but I don't know this. Do I care? Yeah. It's like it all part today? of, does it matter today? It doesn't. So it's like, mm-hmm. you might as well just jump in and go for it. Yeah. I think that's really think true. The, this part too about rejection though, kind of also explains a little bit about how like our husbands have felt in this situation Yeah, is like, we are choosing to not continue a life with them. Right. And like that, in itself triggers all sorts of stuff within them. I think that's a big reason why we hear about husbands that are like pissed off and mad and like, or depressed everything or yeah. depressed. Yeah. Right. Cause it is like this rejection abandonment thing that's happening. Yeah. It just feels like somebody is, they didn't pick you. You're not good enough. Yeah. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're, you don't have it together enough. They didn't pick you and it feels like hell. And my ex even said to me, he was like, if you were leaving for another man, he was like, I would have massive issues with this right now. Yeah. Like if there was something for him that made it like cushion the blow that it was women. Right. And I always think about that. Not that I have any desire to date men whatsoever, but I'm like, God, like if I, that's the thing that's like going to upset keep you him. gay. Not, that's what's going to keep you gay. <laughs> that's what's going to keep me gay. I just, I don't want to break Tom's heart. <laughs> not the fact that I really haven't found any men attractive in forever. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. Like that he felt a sense of like rejection, but it was mitified by the fact that you were picking something that's not even in the same competition. I mean, it's one's an apple, one's an orange. I want an orange. Right. But some men don't look at it like that. Yeah. You know, they look at it as more, more of like a, stab in the back I guess right I I don't I yeah I think Chris felt the same way as you're describing like he's yeah yeah the one that I took from that Jillian was um to walk away from someone you care about who cannot meet your needs is one of the bravest acts you can do and Mm. I think that's so true like to walk away from someone you care about who cannot meet your needs is one of the bravest acts you can do and it's so true because you're to walk away when there's nothing on the other side, to walk yeah. away when you don't know what else is going to be there, but you know that this situation isn't meeting your needs. Mm-hmm. I think that is really brave. It's so easy to just keep on keeping on. 
Absolutely. I mean, if, if you really take a step back and like look at people's relationships, how many people are staying in that relationship just because it's scary to walk away from that person? Yeah. You know, right. things are not working. But yet you're going to stay because it's too scary. Yeah. Or you start to doubt, like, what is what's working? What's working? Like, how do you define what's working? Is it normal? Is this normal? Is that normal? It's like, how do you define it? It, it, That is a great question because sometimes it's like, like, for instance, you know, staying in a heterosexual marriage. Right. There was a lot of things that were working. Yeah, really well. We're great parents together yep. like we get along we didn't fight fun to have dinner nice with home fun to, yeah. yeah our families were good like and and loved him that his family loved me but then there's this other thing that wasn't working yeah. you know so i guess it, it's kind of like how important are those things to you i don't know and that's where i give grace like to people who <laughs> don't make the choice we made. Like, I think I, I've said this before, but when I first came out, I was like, oh, you have to be authentic and all these things. But the truth is, is that there is a price of admission. And sometimes that price is high enough that it's not worth it for some people to do it. And I don't blame them anymore. Right. I don't look at them as like less than or weaker than. I look at them as they made a choice that worked for them. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that they have to stay in that choice. That's the other thing. You can change your mind. Right. So... You know, I think there, there's, there's, there's two, there's, it's no, no right or wrong. There isn't. There's like a million avenues. Yeah. There's a million avenues. That's right. And I, I, you're absolutely right. I think some people it's like, you know, it's too hard to leave. Right. It's too scary. It's too financially threatening. Right. And even just the fact of, like you said, like for, I, I think about how, like I was, I didn't work, like I didn't have any, I had his money and he was great with like he didn't he'd make me feel bad but I do think too like it was more than that it was like we also had a nice time together we liked the same tv mm-hmm. we you know we went on we enjoyed the same kind of travel like it's not like I was suffering in some way I just right. had this other feeling but it was more like our the rest of the marriage was perfectly happy yeah so I can see where some people do feel like sometimes why why give up that For this other thing, Mm -hmm. maybe it's not worth it for them. And like that post you just read too, for people who are leaving and they're, they don't have a catalyst. There isn't someone on the other side waiting. Right. Like, I think that's why we have such a like desire to, to get out and date and meet someone because it's like, you need that safety net. You need to know it's going to be worth it. And yeah, yeah, to walk away and not know, oh, it's like terrifying. It's terrifying and it's brave to do it, but it's also just so to me, wonderful when it's not about what's on the other side it's that you know what needs to happen and you're willing to do it you know you have faith in yourself that you'll the other side will be something else better yeah and I think it is hard have faith, have faith in the universe yeah that it's putting you on the right path exactly it's not always going to present itself right away no And I think that's so true and I think about like our friend um from group who I actually had dinner with last night um, Melina, you know, she oh, didn't yeah. have any, anything go. I mean, she mm-hmm. had a dream. She said this on the podcast. It's not private. I mean, she literally knew that this wasn't working, knew that she was gay and had nothing on the other side, no experience. She'd had nothing. And that's fucking brave. Right. Like she wasn't going to gay bars. She wasn't like, she left this accountant husband and went a completely different direction. Mm-hmm. There's something like really, really with no cool catalyst, about that. No, no catalyst, girlfriend on the other nothing. side. Yeah, not a single date, not a kiss. No, nothing. I think she had one gay friend. Yeah, like I don't know. I always. I mean, think that about... to me, that like, yeah, I, you're reminding me of this, and that is the one person that I always think of. He's like, she really took the leap. Yeah, and now she's happy in a relationship. Oh my and god! Yeah, lovely. she did it. She did it beautifully. Yeah. She's very methodical. Like I, she, I've been begging her for years to get a job down here. Like she lives basically in Decatur. She, I want her to work down here because she drives mm-hmm. so far to work and I'm always like trying to get her to get a job down here. And she's very methodical. You know, she's like, I'm going to do this for this many more years. Then I'm going to look down there. And it's like, she ends up doing all of it. She mm-hmm. just 
She has a plan. She has a plan. Sure. She has a plan, <laughs> exactly. And I I'm love like that about her. Many of us. Oh, yeah. You and I are literally always, <laughs> always on the same. I'm like, what day is it? <laughs> I know. You could move tomorrow and I might be too. It truly is. At the end of our last episode with Teddy, we mentioned something about doing a segment kind of like pitch letting singles yep. pitch themselves on our podcast. Yes. Um, and I think this is a really cool idea. I do too. Cause I was thinking about how there was used to be a billboard on and Buckhead that had somebody had put up for somebody who wanted to meet someone like a friend uh-huh. of theirs or something. And it just like had a picture of him and like how great he is. And I just always thought there was something so sweet about that. I'm sure he had a million people see it and reach out but I, I want to look at this as like that. Like it's this billboard that you're going to get to pitch. And then maybe even if someone's like intriguing, we have them on. Yeah. If we, yeah, if we can make it. Everyone's going to be intriguing. But yeah, minutes. if we can work out oh, the yeah. timing. Um, so if anyone wants to do this, yep. if you were single and you're like, I need to put myself out there, the yep. apps aren't working, what have you, send us an audio clip. Yes. I'd say make it about like, a minute, two minutes or so, just yeah. giving your, your sell, your pitch on yeah. yourself. What do you Give like us, to do? Yeah. And with? like, and maybe what you tell us that, and then tell us kind of what you might be looking for. And then tell us also generally age, like it can be a bracket, yeah. but give us generally your age. Yeah. And where you live and where you live. Yeah. And if you're willing to do long distance. Yeah. And then how can they, do we want people then to like DM them? Um, yeah, if you guys can send them to our email, okay. Um, it's like send an audio clip. You can record an audio clip on an iPhone. It's so it's easy, really y'all. Easy. Yeah, there's a voice memo app. You record it into there and just hit send and email it to us. Email is better. Instagram, for some reason, deletes audio messages after you play them. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I learned that a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, so just send them to our email, which you hear at the end of the podcast, and. Yeah, like really basic, like, hey, I'm Allie, I'm 49, Um, I like X, Y, and Z, and here's what I'm looking for in a partner. Um, You can talk about, you know, if any, where you live, obviously, but if any big things that are, like, important to you, just give us a little snapshot of who you are. Yeah, and your Instagram handle or whatever, a way to get in touch. Yeah. Although, I don't know that people really want to put their email address on the podcast. Instagram th- handle feels safe to me. Right. You know? And we could even do, people. we could even do a thing where like, if this turns into a thing, people could, since we can only do like one per episode, we could do it where maybe we post some of their, like we could post yeah. them on Instagram. Yeah, totally. Let's, let's see where this thing goes. We're going to yes. give it a life of its own. <laughs> I love it. We I need a good too. name too. Yeah. 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 Help you know. us think of a name. I'm, my them. brain is. I know I'm fried. I'm to totally creative. fried. I have not slept all week. So really? I'm, like, I'm yeah. sleeping, but I'm waking up really tired. I have a lot of stress in my life right now. So yeah. I feel like I'm just not. I wake up and it's like I felt like I slept hard, and but I'm like exhausted. Man, I, know. I feel like I I see every hour on the clock. Oh, I hate it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's rough. And then yeah. the dog wakes me at seven thirty. So oh god, fun times. I know. I know. Get a puppy. It's a, right. It does get it does get easier. Speaking of puppies, do you still have a third oh, puppy? Oh yes. Oh, Let's not my talk. God. It's a very sore subject. <laughs> but he is really, really cute. Oh They Lord. always are. I know. He's a lot of work puppy though. But he has made our other puppy grow up. Like she's now perfect. Oh nice. Yeah, I don't know if he like wears her out or what, but she's like Totally no problem anymore. Um, have you watched Marley and Me before? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, my God. I just was watching this the other day with the kids. And I was like, I don't know why I'm like, this is a fun movie, right? Yeah. And then, like, she miscarries and, like, Marley's, like, resting his head on her leg. I'm, like, choking up yeah. watching this. And I suddenly realized, I'm like, Marley dies at the end. Oh, it gets and worse. I'm showing yes. Oh my god. Movie. Did they end up liking they it? Did. My kids never liked the movies I'm like showcased from they the past. They didn't want to finish it. I told because I was like, I better warn them. And I yeah. was like, hey guys, like just so you know, like this is a movie about Marley's life, and he dies at the end. <laughs> and they're like, why are you showing this? <laughs> to us? Showing this. Oh my god. And I was like, 
sorry. And they didn't want to finish it after that. Yeah, so. it's terrible. I kind of spoiled the movie, but I also didn't want to have like two bawling children on my hands. I know. I'm. We watched a movie the other day with the kids that was like good for all of us. And I'm totally blanking on the name. But if I think of it, I'm going to tell you because I was like blown away that we all sat there engaged. Yeah. Because that never it happens. It is hard to find. Yeah. Like, um, we just watched Squid Game the Challenge. They did okay. both like that. Um, okay. Did the, you ever do the Daddy's Home Christmas one? You know what? I don't think we. That's have, good. Actually. Watch that with them. Yeah. Just the Christmas one or the first? I mean, one the first too? one's the classic, but the second one is Christmas and it's, it's funny Christmas and focused. yeah, yeah. So it's a good okay. holiday movie. That and Owen's in it. Yeah, and Owen's in it, and it's Will Ferrell. <laughs> it's just good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. And then That's I'll tell you some idea. behind the scenes funny stories that happened on that set. I think when we met, my kids were too young to to watch that movie, but now they'd be good. Yeah, there's nothing bad in it. Yeah, at all. But there is a part where um, Scar, the little girl, drinks like she gets into the alcohol at the mm-hmm. like manger scene, and she has to do like that's a, nothing. That's I nothing. Had, in yeah. the past week, I've had to explain what a virgin is. What? Um, why Marley was going to the vet. To not have babies. Brecken's like, the oh boy, God, can't have babies. <laughs> and there was something. Oh, I had to explain the miscarriage thing. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I've had a lot of hard conversations. Yeah. You know, it's funny you're saying that because I was writing with Reed. This is so gross. I don't know why I'm even telling you this. But we were listening to um, Grease Lightning. Like, we were listening to the uh-huh. Grease soundtrack. I mean, Owen always has, like, Great musicals soundtrack. on. Great soundtrack. And so we're listening to Grease Lightning. And then Reed is like, chicks will cream. Chicks, what is that? Like, why do they say oh that? And That's I'm, in that song? Yes. I've never noticed that. I Maybe I'm hearing it wrong, but I heard it too. And then I'm like, wait, what? And then he's asking, oh, and I'm God. like, I don't know what that is. I don't think that's what they said. But he's like, they did. What is that? Oh, my God. I know. It's, it's coming up. It's hilarious. Is it? Oh. Chicks will cream. Is it right? Does it yes. say that? Yeah. It's even worse than okay. that. There's other stuff in there that I was like, I don't know, Reed. And then I looked at Owen like, what? Okay. Yeah. This says, dad, what does chicks will cream mean? Yeah. <laughs> and the dad's answer was, it means the car was so supreme and goes so fast, it will make the girls lose their lunch if they ride in Grease Lightning. Oh, okay. That's a great thing to but, say. Well, that, that's the explanation that dad gave. Okay, that's I what think... I should have said. They'll lose their lunch. Okay, so I didn't... what did you say? I was like, I don't think that's what it said, and I just kept going. Oh, it, uh, yeah, sometimes you just got to play dumb. Yeah, I was like, I don't think so. I, and he was... Like, I told them that a virgin was someone who hasn't been in a long relationship. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, I'm going to have to explain this to Kaylin before she goes to middle school. For sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, good to know. Yeah. Good to know. So the drunk, the drunk manger scene, I know, isn't, isn't going to be a big deal. <laughs> you should definitely watch it. Well, off to the races. We'll chat later. Yes. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Want to support the Lesbian Chronicles podcast? Rate us and write a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We love listener feedback. If you'd like to share your story, email us at melissaandally at gmail.com. That's Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-A, and Allie, A-L-L-I, at gmail.com. Or follow us on Instagram at Lesbian Chronicles.